Like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Faye Ko, and today I'm going to talk to you about game development, specifically game development using Unity 3D. So, how exactly is a game made? Well, it's a multifaceted process that involves the work of programmers, designers, artists, writers, engineers, producers, researchers, marketing, QA, UI UX teams, video editors, CEOs, you get the picture. It's nothing short of the kind of work that goes into something like producing a film. In a large AAA studio, that would be the like those are divisions in entire companies, but at smaller startups, it's likely that one person is doing a little bit of all of these jobs. So when I say game dev, I feel like most people get this image in their heads, and they wouldn't be wrong. So this is a game being made in Unity, the game engine that I'll be demoing a bit of later on. But game dev can also look a lot like this. Paper prototyping before actually beginning to code a game is a common practice. It's a lot easier sometimes to map out a small level or a set of rules and then test them out with pen and paper than it is to actually go in and then spend hours writing that code to find that it doesn't fit with the flow of the game or the theme of it. And more often than not, game development can look like this. So does this look a little familiar? Um, this is a picture that I took of a bunch of user stories for a final project that I was working on in a game dev class. So more often than not, game developers start with a user story such as, as a player, I want to be able to press A to jump, or as a player, I want to be able to walk around. These stories are then assigned to um, the developers and put into the backlog. They're soon shifted into in progress, and then when they're finished, they're put into the done column. We're all pretty familiar with this type of work process. But I'm not here to talk to you today about user stories. I'm here to talk to you about this kind of game development. So like I mentioned before, this is a game being made in the game engine Unity. There are a bunch of other game engines out there, some of which you may have heard of. There's Unreal Engine that's uh, made games such as Batman Arkham City, Bioshock Infinite, and Mass Effect, as well as, this, as the older Source SDK that's um, made games such as Half-Life 2 and Dota 2. The next couple of slides I'm going to show you are games that have been made in Unity. You may or may not recognize them. Let's take a look. So if you've ever played Lara Croft Go, it's made in Unity. It's a mobile game for iOS and Android platforms. And if you've ever played Monument Valley, it's also um, made in Unity. This is a mobile game made also for iOS and Android platforms. And finally, the very popular Hearthstone was also made in Unity. It's a uh, game for console, PC, and it's worth noting Hearthstone because the developer of this game, Blizzard, is a huge AAA company that has also developed the following games. World of Warcraft, Starcraft, and their um, newest first-person shooter, Overwatch. Knowing that a hugely successful company like Blizzard is using Unity provides a lot of confidence for indie developers who are pursuing their passion by making games. So, we've talked a little bit about Unity overall, but what is it exactly? Well, created in 2005, it was the first all-in-one tool to publish to multiple platforms, allowing for professional games to be made by anyone who had an idea in their head. Now, the key word here is um, multiple platforms. So, what's so what makes Unity so powerful is that any game that's built in Unity can be ported to um, all these different platforms, such as PC, console, mobile, and web. Unity also supports 2D and 3D games, and it was and its game engine was built written in primarily C Sharp, as well as Unity Script, which is Unity's own version of JavaScript. Most importantly, Unity also helped to usher in the era of indie games. So I mentioned this term indie before, but for those of you who are unfamiliar, it basically refers to something that's just much more recent, though not always independent of publishers. It's all about having accessible tools and publishing platforms that allow for the creation of passion projects to become a reality. Some indie games include Braid for PlayStation, Journey for PlayStation, and the hugely popular mobile game, Minecraft. So, now it's time for a quick demo of Unity. All right. Oh no. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, this is um, what the Unity game engine looks like. I'm in a scene right now, and all games in Unity are built using scenes. You can think of a scene as, if you've ever played The Legend of Zelda, a room in a dungeon in that game. And if you were to transition from one room to the next, 
That would be the same thing as transitioning from one scene to another scene in Unity. And we can transition from scenes using scripts. And scripts are basically just code, bits of code that control the game logic, uh, like everything from a set of hints to the player controllers. So as you can see in this scene, we're in a kind of beach-like environment that was created using Unity's terrain tool. And there's also some water in the scene, which was from Unity's asset store. Fun fact, water is actually a really expensive feature to have in a game, especially the reflections in water. So if you're ever playing a game and you see some water and some reflections, just know that was a really expensive feature for them to have. <laughs> OK, so let's take a look at our player cube. It's a sphere now, but I'm going to go in game. It'll be a cube. And on the right here is our inspector. Um, these are a bunch of tools that are put on the player cube, um, such as the cube mesh filter, box collider, mesh renderer, that just help the um, player character become more dynamic once we're in game. This transform position, x and z position, are the coordinates where I'm at situated right now. And these will change once I'm in game. And I wanted to draw your attention to this player controller script at the bottom here. So this move speed and turn speed are actually global variables that I defined in the player controller script that I can manipulate directly in the inspector without having to go into the code. Because that would be a huge hassle to like, have to go into the code and keep trying to like, change the speed if, if I was going too fast or too slow. So let's take a look at that in action. All right. So I'm going through this nice open environment. As, and as you can see, in the top right-hand corner, my X and Z position are changing as I move around. We're at a nice turning speed, but let's slow things down a bit. So I can change my move speed, and now we're moving really, really slowly through this environment. And if I want to go a bit faster, all I have to do is change it to a higher number. <laughs> and let's go back to a good speed. So as you can see, we can do really simple but powerful tools, uh, things such as play basic player controller script that form the basis of a game. And we can do this just by plain old code. And it's not unsimilar to the type of coding that we've been doing here at Grace Hopper. So I'm going to walk you through a bit of this just to show you how similar it is. This was written in C Sharp through Mono Develop, which is Unity's own text editor. And, um, so at the top, you can see we require in some dependencies. And then we create this basic player controller class. Inside of it, we declare the variables move speed and turn speed. And as you saw in the inspector, we were able to directly manipulate these without having to go into the code. Now we have a couple of statements that help us determine how we want our player to move through the game. And in particular, I wanted to draw your attention to the if statement on line 18. Does that look a little familiar? Because it should. It looks a lot like jQuery. And we can code certain events that happen in our game, such as the player being able to pick up an object or hold down W to move forward um, through a get key down method. That's not unsimilar to jQuery's own key down method. So as you can see, creating a game isn't too different from the type of coding that we've been doing here at Grace Hopper. Finally, here are some resources for those of you who have become interested in game development because of this short talk. And hopefully, I've inspired one or some of you to become the next great indie developers. Thank you.